Forget the numbers. Actually passed exactly 100. Ah, exactly 100. <laughs> Old expectations. Is it comparable? Mm. I guess I was pushing a little bit too much and I got squeezed. How do you handle now the situation? So welcome again to everybody from watching our interviews and today we're back with Antero Yoki. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> still <laughs> remember name, my name? Yeah, I still remember it. It was good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a half year ago, actually yeah. a little longer, <laughs> when we met last time in, uh, in Dahab. Yeah, that was October. In October. <laughs> and where you told me about your record try. Yeah. So, how's it going right now? I, we were talking about how your training goes, what you're going to do. And you went for a competition, meanwhile, in Sharm el Sheikh as well, at the same time, when you went up. Yeah, in the last uh, interview we talked about the Sharm el Sheikh competition and how it was a little bit difficult to get comfortable with the depth and the pressure. And I think that was the due, due to uh, old expectations, because you have been deep already. Well... Afterwards, the spring this year has not been the best possible uh, in, in uh, end of January I lost my job and uh, that was first time ever in my life that it was other than, than uh, financial reasons in the company. I don't know still what really was the real reason because nobody ever mentioned anything that my job is not done correctly or something. And it was the last days of my test period, proper mm -hmm. which is six months in Germany, and then just said laid off. And uh, slowly that created a depression for me. Mm -hmm. And then this spring has not been really the best time for my training. So how did it affect the training? I mean, it's one part of your well, life. It's when, when, it's when life. Well, you're out of work and you have lots of time to think. And But the thoughts are not very positive at that moment. So, there has been days that I just lived, didn't leave the bed. Okay. So, but you stayed all the time in Germany, right? Yeah, yeah. I lived there. Okay. So, what was your, actually your plan from January on? Well, did, where was the plan to train? What was the plan to do? <laughs> well... Basically then mostly concentrate on, on the gym training still and then start pool for swimming technique and, and then increase more carbon dioxide training in the later later in the spring. Mm -hmm. But it was not really well done. Okay. Yeah. So for the ones who don't really know what you were aiming to do, what was the final goal? What what it did was you want to reach? To do eighty meters snow fins in, in World Championships Nice this year. Okay, in Nice. Yeah. 80 meters no offense. Yeah. Okay. And so... So, of course, you still have hope, but it's not really realistic. Okay, but you still go there? I go there to the competition and mm -hmm. do what I can, but aiming to 80 is not probably happening. Okay. So for me, the question, which is quite interesting to see, is something happened in your life which had a strong effect on your mental state. Mm -hmm. Can I say it like that? Yeah. So how do you handle now this situation? Because if I imagine it's a specific part of your life, but still the rest of your life might be the same, huh? Well, freediving is just hobby. So that's not the most important part in, in my life, at least. Mm -hmm. And I hope it's not for any, any freediver, it's not the most important thing in the world. It's play for adults, as some famous freediver has said earlier. <laughs> Uh, freediving is helping also to get your thoughts out of these things but you sometimes get stressed out of some other situation in your life it's helping that way but to make really efficient training aiming to some goal it, it becomes cr quite hard to fully concentrate on your training. Mm -hmm. So, 
you, you can separate things from from your life. You have this physical health, you have mental health and social health, and and they all connected to, to each other. And when something is, you could say, terribly wrong, then it affects on the other ones too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if I now just imagine, okay, I'm I'm just spinning around in my head a little bit. You've been freediving. You've been freediving quite deep as well. Mm -hmm. You passed the hundred meters. You, um, you reached not actually passed exactly one hundred. Uh, exactly one hundred. <laughs> okay, I thought maybe to be correct. Okay, yeah, yeah. so officially one hundred meters. Yeah. Okay, but you kind of reached specific limits for you, like essential limits that can actually um, cause you like a real problem physically. Okay. Compared to that. To free diving, diving maybe to 100 meters or to 80 meters, no fins, which is combined with a lot of re real risk for you mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. Compared to that, something happened in your life with your job, which is actually. Is it comparable? Mm. Or what, what it's, in, in it's, the worst case can happen if you lost your job? It's, it's different, of course. Well, it means uh, financial problems and. and uh, some other difficulties in in life and uh, st mental stress as well because you try to figure out how to uh, make things better and and how to survive from this situation and so on and freediving is i would say totally different from that because it's always so short time you do it's it's some minutes you dive mm -hmm. it's not weeks or months okay but it's still very extreme like in freediving you yeah. know, you can die Yes. If you lose your job, you, you, don't, don't, die. you don't die from you it. You don't die. Okay, it's, uh, it's just something, it's something else. in your routine. It's, it's making your life uncomfortable, but it's not uh, lethal. So the risks are different, and I think the mental effect also is different. And so as, for me, as I feel. And if I think I'm going to die, which is one of the highest stress factors that we actually have in life, yeah. and I'm really close to it, how can another situation that is kind of not really... It doesn't have a real effect life-wise. How can that have such an impact on you? Mm. Well, I moved to Germany five years ago. And I started here with no language, no connections, no job. And the beginning was hard. And since I got my first job, I decided I will not be without a job anymore. And because it's, it's really stressful situation in a yes you can still say strange country and 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 uh, you try to find your way there in this society and then i was forced into this back to this situation by by decision of, of my my boss mm -hmm. and i think that was the hard part i felt that i came back to the uh, zero level But if you compare now, with it was just a uh, mentally it was hard. But if you compare with freediving, just imagine you, you're diving deep and you think everything is smooth, everything is okay, and then suddenly you have a strong current. Something um, happens. You yeah, you feel comfortable. It's a, for me to well, understand. Cor it's currents a, don't just jump there; they are there all the time. But maybe they you didn't are, expect yeah. them, okay? Yeah. Or something is happening. I mean, it's a stressful situation as well. So for me, the question is right now: How do you <laughs> handle? Yeah, because you know, for me, in freediving. It's, How do you it's, it's, it's not situations. important. Because Why? in freediving, important things only happen in my head. Maybe that's also in life, but uh, when something happens in your head, it's not so easy to correct. Uh, it takes time. But in, in freediving, for example, current, I, I, I don't think about it. Mm -hmm. It's there and... I just concentrate on me and try to do the best what I can. I've had some some dives already in, for example, in Charm. There was some strong current, but yeah, it didn't bother me. Okay, because you know that there are currents. If there are or not, I cannot control. I don't have any control there. So that's why I don't let it have a meaning. So how can that's you... how I I try to think. But like I said, freediving is a short time thing, it's mm -hmm. minutes. You take a stopwatch to take time, but when you are 
trying to figure out uh, something else in your life. Sometimes it's a calendar you need to take time. It's different. But what can you transfer from this extreme situation from freediving into your temporary situation? Uh, If you just said, for example, Andero, mm -hmm. I can't control it in the sea. You cannot control any decisions from other people as well. No, I can't. Huh. But it, it's just was so personal how I took it. I guess it's, it's how my reaction was there made the difference. But it was so personal that it it's had a strong effect on me. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to else describe this. Well, then to make things even even better than uh, in the summer when I thought that I start to get training back. I guess I was pushing a little bit too much and I got squeezed. So, okay. <laughs> uh, then it was again three weeks break in diving. Okay. That happens, huh? Yeah. Can and happen. I'm pretty sure that other people who will watch this, they had the same situation. And I think it's very cool that you talk about this because this is a, mm. it's a very important situation to show it. You know, something might go wrong, something unexpected might happen. And so, what happens with my training as well? So, our Absolutely. mental capability has a big impact in our training too. Mm -hmm. So, this is a reason what we can work with, right? Yeah, and, well, still it's quite emotional. Um, the thing why I wanted to make this interview now is that uh, I don't have to explain this to everybody separately. Mm -hmm. So it kind of makes it easier. Okay. But it's a good solution. Uh, I hope. Yeah. So what is your next personal goal? Where do you want to go? <laughs> I find work. Okay. Still working on that. Okay. So your focus changed? Well... I don't think that the stream is still going about freediving, but like I said, it's not whole life, it's just freediving. Mm -hmm. It's for fun. And sometimes when it's no fun, then it's a bit hard to do. So how can you get the fun back in it? What could you do? If you just imagine... In right freediving, basically, yeah, but in the other part of... I just need to get my other part of life in order. So what can support you around it? If, if, you, have this if, if you know a good place to work. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> But for you, for example, to get into a good shape, to get into a good mental shape as well. If we just imagine in our, we have in our life with specific islands. Yeah, one is work, one is hobby, one is friends, one is uh, relationships as well. Where can you get the energy from? No, I'm kind of a question. Well. What you, where I think you this, this kind of energy you can, you can find when, when, when your foundation is in okay. Mm -hmm. But now my foundation is a little bit broken. So, I don't know how, how to explain this, but it's just, The financial security is one thing, of course, which you need to your life. And now it's a little bit shaking. How can you, where can you recharge? Just imagine your body is a smartphone. Yeah, and now you're low on battery. There's, there's no plug you can get money out of. Yeah, but energy, mental energy. How can you get to a point where you say, this is where I can get more energy from to invest it into something that I have to work on? Do you know? I don't know. Oh, I know my plugs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now sleeping in a tent. I'm now here with you. Um, I'm on the outside. I go free diving a little bit. I have a good breakfast, a good coffee. No, I'm talking with you now, so yeah. that's one thing. Just doing something else, doing mm -hmm. something different. Yeah. Doing something that feels good for me, that I'm comfortable with. And I think it's always something that we have to try. You know, I like to eat, aren't that okay? Maybe you know this already. So, <laughs> so life for me, like, like life, life is like a buffet. Mm. 
you go there and you don't know what to eat. And so I try. And what yeah. I like, I eat more. What I don't like, I say, meh. Yeah. I'm not meaning to say that my whole life is now a disaster. It's, it's not. Many things are really uh, in a good place. Mm -hmm. But, of course, work is quite important thing. And... Depending financially from other people, it's not so nice. Yeah. But it's it only... It doesn't feel good. But as you said, sometimes, as you said in freediving, it's only a moment. You know, yeah. it can only be a minute or it can be maybe a week, a specific training. Or if you have an accident, like a lung squeeze, it's maybe three weeks. But you know it's over afterwards, right? Yeah, yeah. What about this situation? Can be the same, huh? Yeah, so at some point it will be over. Yes, I know. I will get to work at some point. And I think that would be the, the relief. So you can actually handle it like something you had before? Uh, yeah, I've done lots of applications already. Okay. Yeah. Some interviews, but so far no job. Okay. So, what about your next personal goal in freediving? How can freediving support you on the way? And in life? Because it all gets together, right? Finding that much from freediving, well, I guess then I would have to be somewhere else than in München. There, I don't see that there will be so much chances in freediving. <laughs> well, now it's summer, huh? It's still possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's almost a little bit over. better than in the winter, but still, it, yeah. it, it, it won't be like a full-time job. It, it won't happen in a, in a so near future. Maybe after some years it would be possible when freediving overall gets more and more attention and an interest in the world. Okay. You told me that you're still going to the World Championships, right? Yeah, okay. sure. So what, what do you want to do there? Meet friends. Okay. <laughs> so your goal is to meet friends? Yeah. Sure. And, and enjoy diving as much as I can. Okay. So it doesn't mean that the free diving is over, even I'm not going to this certain depth. It's just I'm probably not going that deep, but something. Mm -hmm. Still fun. The interesting thing is, um, as we have this interview a couple of days before, some other athletes said that they will not go to the World Championships. Okay. Because of kind of similar reasons. Yeah, too much training, mental health is not perfect, physical health is not perfect. I can't really go there. So this is actually, you know, it's, it's not only being you in a position of having this goal and not the possibility to attend yeah. mm -hmm. and maybe reach out to your goal. So this is actually something that we have to take in consideration as well, that it's not only our physics that limit us, it's mostly our mental health that actually limits us. It, that's mostly in freediving. What I see that it's, it's demanding more from your mental side than physical side. Mm -hmm. Physical side training, it's easy. Well, only, only thing can be, but I think it's also related to mental, mental, mental side. Is this this uh, being comfortable in in a deep door or or get deep enough? That, that always has been my problem. That well, basically, it makes my deep diving safe, so I can always go as deep as I can, and it's easy to swim up. So <laughs> it's it's not like, for example, I think Guillaume has this problem, and then maybe William Trowbridge that they have to think how deep they can go because they can equalize easily and mm -hmm. they can go, but can they swim up? That's the thing. But for me, it's always... I can go as deep as I, I can go and equalize and then I just swim up. That's never been a problem. But for me to go to World Championships, it always has been one big aspect that I, I, I feel so comfortable with the, with other people. There's so huge positive energy with this group. And yeah, I think I need that more than ever. So, and I think maybe... This might be a nice goal to have, huh? 
to feel comfortable, to be around nice people, to enjoy what it's actually about. Yeah. Uh, and um, it's so interesting for me because there are many freedivers who are aiming a specific goal and they are mainly, sometimes mainly focused on it and then something's changing. And then it's maybe hard to reach. But just to show yeah. right now with you actually what can happen that has a main effect on these goals is something that maybe many people don't see. Mm. Yeah, but uh, still, uh, freediving and uh, numbers there, they just are showing how well you have learned yourself and you understand yourself. And what what is somehow the the balance inside you with physical and and mental and all parts of you, but it has not been the the main idea in freediving uh, overall. Even I have been quite competitive freediving in, in freediving as well. But it's the spirit of freediving is just to have fun together. That's the thing. That has kept kept me going to big competitions. Just enjoying nice people. Well, then you have the chance and the yeah, World Cup again. Of course. To meet all these nice people. Yeah. And dive together. That's super cool. So if you want to send out a message to other people who might not be competitive freedivers, what do you want to tell them learning out of your well, in, situation? In, in when I started freediving I never thought that I would compete. I did not have one thought about going to competitions, mm -hmm. but then luckily the first national competitions in Finland, they were team competitions. So there was two guys and they needed a third one to the team. And I could say that after quite a long time talking, I finally said, okay, I will come. And then I, I realized that I did a little bit better results in the competition uh, that I did in training. There was a big group of nice people there. It was really positive experience. Mm -hmm. And then I started to do that more and more. Now I've been in 14 World Champs. Actually, my first World Championships was 2005 in Nice. Okay, oh, so, oh it goes back again. <laughs> yeah. 14 years later. Oh, yeah. 14 years. Yeah. Wow. That's quite a while, huh? Yeah. Cool. Beard is grey now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah. All right. But there has become many good people, friends during these years. So, so this is—is is this the most important part for you about freediving? The people, social life. Yeah, I could say that. Enjoying it. Yeah, and then of course, learning you, mm -hmm. more understanding about you and what happens inside you. I don't say that it makes everything good, but it helps. Mm -hmm. It helps a lot. Okay, cool. Is this something that you want to forward to to younger people who just started freediving? Well, the thing is to learn yourself. Mm -hmm. Try to listen your body because your body is always the wiser. The head wants or makes borders. Okay. But your body always knows what you can do. Okay. So try to learn the language what your body is telling to you. That's the aim. Forget the numbers. Numbers, you can put a goal when you're not diving, but when you go diving, don't think about numbers. I would like to kiss you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. It's, a, it's a beautiful ending. I love this. This is what it's about. Well, it's about for me, the same. Huh? Yeah. I think as, as soon as you understand yourself and your physical sensation, you're creating more awareness, the rest will come by itself. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Cool. Thank you very much. Antero, thank you very much.